everyone! So, I just finished this book, Come the Morning, by Shannon Drake. And sorry, it's a, um, it's got one of the book jackets, so libraries tend to put plastic covers on them. So, you know, to keep them protected. And I'm... It could have been better if our hero, or like, our hero was a better character. And I didn't like him. This could have been a whole lot better. And I may have wanted to buy it if, you know, our male character, you know, was nice and decent. And he was not. He's a super untrusting person. And he he holds dominance over our, our, our heroine and the stuff that the king has given him. And because at the time women didn't have rights but apparently certain parts but it didn't used to always be like that it, you know women used to have equal rights as men and then at a point during our human lifetime there was a point where women had less right had more rights than a child but so much less rights than a man which in this day and age yes we us women may be paid less than what a man would get paid at the same job, but I think we all have the same rights as a human, as a person in this day and age, rather than back in this time. But, ah! like, I understand the part of the king and, like, the Scottish king in this story, which he, I think he's, he's a real person. Like, we have this, where is it now? I missed it. this part here and it tells us of all that's happened at this time to the point where she can I did read at the part where she did a shit ton of research so that I guess this is pretty accurate but I don't like it I have nothing wrong with the story the way the plot went and all that I I don't particularly like the king just because of his own personality and be like I own Scotland and because of this day and age the um the Norman the Norman laws at that time were like I own this property you are tied you are part of this property and I'm gonna give you to my best man because he deserves you know all that shit and you know women didn't have a right to like if like if they were like our, her our heroine is a firstborn and, you know, her father died and the only child of this lineage of this land that this property of land, the castle and like the little residents around it, like the villagers. At this day and time, day, day and age, she doesn't have a right to own it herself. She has to have a, you know, a husband to run it. And this time, Vikings are not nice people, apparently. But I have some Viking romance novels, and they can be really nice people. But anyway, in this story, you know, they're, they're not the nicest people. And she is half Viking, as, you know, I, I read here. And yeah, I've lost some nails. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? It's just... I can understand why I do not like the king, but as you know, as, as I've stated, this is a romance novel. You are supposed to fall in love with, you know, our main characters, and our main characters are Wark and Meliora. Meliora, right? Yes, Meliora. Where's the name? Yes, Meliora. Now, I, as I said, I do not like Wark. That's who he is. He is, ah, he doesn't trust her and he doesn't care how she feels, at least in the beginning. Well, yeah, he kind of still doesn't care, but he cares, you know, as he progresses, you know, redeeming qualities or whatever, you know, he starts to trust her a little bit, starts to care for her feelings, a little bit, not much. And it's flippin' annoying. I'm not saying like, oh my god, he's supposed to love the woman unconditionally. It's like, no, I understand that. But, 
in a romance novel, you're supposed to, you know, love these characters. But no. No. I also gotta let you know, this is recorded on Halloween and right now trick-or-treaters are starting to come. So, it's just, Warwick was really annoying. But I liked Meliora. It's, she does have her faults. And it's okay. But, you know, she becomes a better, better person. I already like, relatively liked her in the beginning, but, you know, I liked her even more as the story progressed on. And I only started really, I only started actually liking Warwick in the last five chapters of the book. And there's 24 chapters. So, like, the good majority, like, two-thirds of the book don't like him. And I only start liking him in the last five chapters because he's starting, he starts to become a better person. But he really hasn't become a complete better person because, meh, it's annoying. So. He is my main reason why I not particularly like this book and the fact that I'm not going to buy it. Meh. Meh. The next book in the story is Con Conquer the Night, which I have to put on interlibrary loan because my library doesn't have it. So it's probably going to take at least four weeks, which means I get to read one of my own and it's one that I've been dying to start reading. Dark Prince by Christine Feehan and this is the author's cut special edition. Author's special cut, whatever. It's the special edition and it's got Ruby. Do you see that? Oh, the rib. Mm, love it. I haven't even, and the inside's just really plain. Some of the insides are actually really, really nice, but I finally get to, I, I actually, this is technically a reread for me. I haven't, I don't think I've actually read, like physically read this book. I haven't actually read physically any of my Christine Feehan books. I've only listened to them on like audio tape or audiobook, which is ah, a little nerve wracking. And, I say this because like I hope I like it actually reading it because I love, obsessively love this series. I do. I obsessively love it. Uh, so yeah, this novel with 100 fewer pages was the author's first book back in 1999. Content was cut to reduce the length. Now for the first time the author's original version is now is available here in a special hardcover edition. Oh god, I love it. Mm. So I'm going to read the in insert flare. Enter the enchanting world of the Carpathians, where dark adventure, mystery, and love await. And the desires of two daring hearts unite in one irresistible passion. A telepathic hunter of serial killers, Raven Whitney helps to catch some of the most depraved criminals, but her work keeps her from getting close to others and has drained her body and spirit. In need of rest and rejuvenation, she embarks for a vacation far from home. Mikhail Dubrinsky, I am not gonna pronounce his last name right, and I, he, I am pronouncing it as best as I can from listening to the audio tapes, so please forgive me, because I love the dual audios. Uh, when There are certain audiobooks that have the dual authors, like a male and female. The male, oh my, God, it's so good. Oh my god, it's orgasmic. That's what it is. Mikhail Dubrinsky is the prince of the Carpathians, the powerful leader of a wise and secret ancient race that thrives in the night. Engulfed by despair, fearful of never finding the mate who can save him from the encroaching darkness, his soul cries out in the loneliness until the day that a beautiful voice full of light and love responds, softly soothing his pain and yearning. From the moment they meet, Raven and Mikhail are helpless to resist the desire that sparks between them, but just as fate unexpectedly brings these life mates together, malviolent, mal, ma, malviolent, malviolent, I never know how to pronounce this, 
I know how it's pronounced malviolence. I just not malviolent. Forces threaten to destroy them and their fragile love. Yet even if they survive, how can these two lovers, Carpathian and human, bring a future together? And how can Mikhail bring Raven into his dark world without extinguishing her beautiful goodness and light? Yes! Ugh. It's been a while, a long while since I have read, heard this tale. I don't think there's any extra little bitties here. No, I don't think so. It's weird. And I was like, the um the audiobook I list the audiobook I listened to, yes. Or no, I read this. I think I anyway, this is twenty one chapters long. I think I have a prologue. I don't know. I don't know with this one. Acknowledgement. Nope. They're just re gonna be really long chapters. So yeah, I'm excited to start reading these! <laughs> I've been dying to get back into the Carpathian world. I love my Carpathian world. Seriously, I love it. Mwah! Though my favorite Carpathian is Razvan. <gasps> Razvan! <gasps> and that is a bunch of books. Uh, I think like 11 books is like book it's after book 10 it's after it's 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 in the double digits where you know this is book one and then the Razvan book like that's our our hero I can't remember our, our heroine but our hero is like in the double digits somewhere but anyway yeah I am excited for this book yes Oh, love you. Love you, Carpathians. Love Christine Feehan, too. I am excited. But I have, like, five books. One of them being another Christine Feehan book. But I have five books that I need to get through before I can bring all of the Carpathian books down from my pile over there. But I hope you like this little book review. It's not... A I, can't, I never have a bad book review or a negative book review. Usually ends up being really, really short or really, really long, depending on how much hate I have for the book. This, I don't have that much hate, but I just, it could have been better and I wish it was better, but no. Like, e she even wrote it, like, somewhat to the time. Like, it was very, quite understandable. A lot better than Venus by Jane Feather. Like, holy crap! That is the writing. The writing in here was so much better, so much un more understandable. And this is during like mm, medieval times. I'd like to say it's like eleven twenty nine, the year. So roughly, I'd say the Middle Ages, especially because of the dress wear and clothing that they wear in this time. But yeah, so, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not going to recommend it, but if you do enjoy Scottish type books, like you love like reading about the Highlands, all the kilts and that sort of stuff, it's okay. And it's got Vikings. The Vikings part is really interesting, but this is a Scottish uh, series. There's five books in there. I have book four. So I have three book. I have two more books to read. But anyway, yeah. Read it if you want. I really don't care. I'm not recommending it. So. so yeah. I hope you enjoyed this weird vlog. And if you did, hit that like button down there below. And um, if you've read this book, you can leave your own comments down below. And, you know, let me know how you enjoyed it. And yes. Yes, the Carpathians. But yeah, if how you like in the series this this series or like this author because I think I had another book by her no I think I only had one no I had two and I don't believe I liked that one I think I hated it I don't remember I'm going to have to go back in uh, my book my videos to see if because I believe I had two Shannon Drakes if not well I don't know. 
whatever, whatever in the comments below. Just don't be negative, don't be nasty, because we do not need that in the world, okay? We do not need that kind of negativity where you're just purposely bringing down someone, okay? Don't need it. And if this is the first time you're watching my video, please hit that big red subscribe button down there. Buy my picture for more book reviews, hauls, unboxing, unbagging, because some things come in a bubble wrap manila envelope or a plastic bag wrapped thingy. Vlogmas, random vlogs, and random, random videos. I have no idea where to categorize. All right, I gotta go deal with watching more Law & Order SVU because I'm on season three. It's good. And I gotta do some stuff on my computer. I gotta put book two on interlibrary loan hold to see if it even exists in any libraries. We'll see. Yes, so. Yeah. I hope you like this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!